What's up? Ladies and gentlemen, here we go, section 8 in this particular video. We're going to talk about, you need to take detailed notes on how do you graph absolute value functions. Now from class, you know what they look like. You know they look like V-shapes, whether they go up, whether they go down, which way they move left or right, up or down. You know that. We're going to talk about very specifically and very quickly how you would graph an absolute value function. So let's do it. Here we go. Okay, let's talk about some basics. Remember this from class over here to the top right. This is the y equals absolute value of x. It's just a simple little V shape. We talked about that with the xy table, and we graphed it with uh, you know um, the graphic calculator online. Doesn't matter. You would know that this is exactly always going to be your standard absolute value of x. And then remember over here. Well, actually, don't remember. This is actually new to you probably. This right here, I'm going to call the standard form of an absolute value equation, standard form of an absolute value function. Um, we could call it vertex form as well, which we'll talk about that later in quadratics. Uh, but all of that being said, this A stands for something, the H stands for something, and the K stands for something. So I for sure write that in your notes, and especially, again, here's the basics. What you remember from us shifting these things left, right, up, down is the following thing, that this right here, the H and the K, represented what we called the vertex. Remember that? It moved the vertex either up, down, left, or right. This one here was the one that moved it, remember, up, if it's positive, or down, if it was negative. So whatever this was, the exact number, whatever it was, is exactly what the Y coordinate for the vertex was. This one here was a little different. This guy, the H, that was the one, remember, that moved it either left or it moved it right. And it actually moved it the opposite direction of what you all thought. So whatever this is in here, you do the opposite of that and you just put the actual H value really, without getting into too much detail, it's what you do. You do the opposite of whatever is right here on the circle thing. So for example, down here, if we have negative 5, that means my vertex would be at 5. I move it over to the right 5, right 5 and then it would go up to that would be the vertex for that one this one here notice sometimes it's possible you actually don't have any h value so that means i don't move anywhere horizontally i don't go left or right anywhere but i am going down five so my vertex will be negative five this one sometimes i actually don't have a k value that's okay that just doesn't mean it moves up or down so my vertex here will go the opposite of whatever this is so the opposite of that would be a positive two and we don't write positive two we just write this we just write two and then comma zero. Where's the zero coming from? Because I don't have a K here. So it's a zero. So it would just move to the right two, but not up or down anyway. Now notice, that's the vertex. This is something though that we haven't talked about yet. It's this goofy thing right here. What is this A value? Well, the A value is actually, notice this. Some of them don't have an A value in front of here at all. That value right there in front of the absolute value symbol, sometimes it's just a, a, a one, which you don't really see. Sometimes it's a half. Sometimes it's negative. What this absolute value function is in this form where there's an A there, it actually represents this. Ready? And yes, you should be writing all this in your notes, all of it. It represents the slope of the right side of the quote-unquote V. Hmm. It represents this piece right here, the slope of the right side of the V. Now here's something you definitely need to write down too. If that A value is positive, then the actual V shape will always be going up like that right there. If the A value is negative, then that V shape will always be going down. So that's how we took the V shape and made it positive. Well, if the positive A, if the A was positive, speak modern. If the po ah, if the A was positive, the V was like this. If the A was negative, then it went it went down like that. There we go. Positive A, negative A. Okay? So all that being said, now let me give you some pretty specific steps when you're actually asked to graph something like this. So you have this guy right here, absolute value equation. It could be a function. I could write f of x. It doesn't matter. 3 absolute value of x minus 4 plus 2. This right here is just a reminder what the A value was, what the H was, what the K was. Here is what I do if I'm going to graph this absolute value equation. They're pretty simple. Step number one, you can see it's going to pop up on your screen right now. You're going to find the vertex of this particular equation. Well, again, that just becomes 
the opposite of whatever this is. So that means I'm going to go opposite of this, so my vertex would be a positive 4. And then I'm going to go exactly as this is, because that goes either right or left, exactly as it is, so positive 2. So I'm going to go 4, 2. So at 4, comma 2, right there, I'm going to put my vertex. That's step number 1. Piece of cake. Step number 2. I'm going to now use this A value, this guy right here. I'm going to use this A value. You betcha. And I'm going to actually use that as the slope to get the right side of my V. So if I look at this thing right here, my A value is a 3. If I'm going to use that as slope, that is 3 over a 1, just like it would have been in any other type of an equation. So I'm going to go from my vertex, I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to go to the right 1, put a dot. Up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1, just like that. Now I'm not going to go down 3 and back 1, down 3, because again, we know this is going to be a V-shape. Since it's a positive 3, a positive A value, I know my V-shape is going to be going up. And what I've actually just graphed is, again, the right side, the right side of this V. That's what this is over here. Okay? That's step number 2. Step number 3, I'm going to use this actual cut line, or the line of symmetry, if you will, which is actually the A value, this 3, right down through here. Not 3, sorry. Not true. The A value is where the actual... Uh, vertex is, not the A value. So down through, I'm going to go this nice and slow so you can see it. Beep, beep, beep. So there's my cut line. It goes right down through the vertex, right down through the vertex. So what I'm going to do is use this line of symmetry, the mirror, the mirror image, if you will. So if I'm going to put a dot over here, I'm going to go one away across from it over there and mirror image that one. I'm going to mirror image this, go two away from the line of symmetry, like that. So that, if you will, is step number three. You're using the line of symmetry to plot the left side of the V. We use the A value to plot the right side. We use the slope, up three over one, up three over one. Now I'm using this line of symmetry to do the other side of it. And then, of course, step number four is just simply draw the V. So I'll start here at my vertex. I'll go straight up like that. That guy goes there. And then I'll start down here in the vertex and draw my V like this. A little wiggly, sorry. But there you go. So there is my absolute value function. The only thing that I would do is I'd erase this line of symmetry. Right there. You don't need that there. So there it is. So that's one simple example, very quick example, but that's how it works. Let me give you another one. So here's this. Ooh, look at this one. So first thing I would do is find my vertex. Mm, well, that's going to be the opposite of this, so it's going to be a positive 5. And then whatever the k value is. Oh, boy. I don't see a k value. Oh, that's right. It means it's 0. So at 5, comma 0, whoa, 5, comma 0, I'm going to put my little line there or my dot for my vertex. So I know this. Down through here is where my axis of symmetry is going to go. I know, ooh, look, my A value. Now I'm on to step two. My A value is negative, so I know the V shape is going to be going downwards. Beautiful. So I use this slope to graph the right side of my V. So that means I'm going to go from my vertex. I'm going to go negative two, down two. 1, 2, and then right 3. Down 2, right 3. So it would be somewhere over there. Beautiful. And then I'm going to do step number 3. I'll use my line of symmetry to mirror image this guy over here like that. I'll mirror image this guy 6 units away. 3, 6, right there. Whoops, I went too far. Oh, actually, I messed up. This isn't right. So let me get rid of that. Hold on. That guy right there is not correct. I didn't go down far enough. I didn't go down two. I went down one, two, three. There we go. That's better. So there's an important thing. If you don't get your points on the right side right, then your points on the left side aren't going to be right either. <laughs> Woo! So make sure you're graphing the right side correctly. Well, that was good. Indirectly, that was nice. So now I'll just draw, I'll draw the V. V, 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 V. There's that side. And there's that side. So there's my absolute value function. Beautiful. I'll do one more for you. Ready? Here it is. So, oh, look at this guy. Well, it's not in standard form, if you will, for an absolute value equation. I have to get rid of this 2, subtract a 2 from both sides, so it gives me y equals negative absolute value of x minus 4 minus 2. So now I have everything I need. i got y by itself. It's in the form that I need. So I can easily, step number 1, find the vertex. So it's a positive 4, negative 2. Why positive 4, mod? Remember, it's the opposite of this, and same as that. So I put it 4, negative 2. 
from a vertex. So down through here is going to be my line of symmetry. Beautiful. So then I'll just do this. I will use the slope. Oh, it's negative. So that means it's going to be going downwards like that, a downward V. I'm going to use this as a slope, so negative 1 over 1. So I'm going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, so on and so forth. There you go. So I'll mirror image it over here. Down 1, down 1, down 1. Beautiful. So then I'll just grab the line that goes like that. Sorry, so wiggly. There you go. So there you go, guys. There is graphing an absolute value function, absolute value equation. What we're going to do in class after we master these, which won't take long, we're actually going to go backwards. What we're going to do is be given one like this. Uh-oh! We're going to be given something like this, and we're going to find the following. We're going to look and say, okay, what's my A value, what's my H value, and what's my K? So the mission is going to be a little more intense. Instead of us finding like we did before with writing the equations of lines and doing slope and in, in y-intercept, now we've got to find the H, the K, and the A. Ooh, we'll do that in class. Did a little preview for you there. So there you go, guys. Pumped up. Enjoy the video. Watch it again, and we'll master these guys in class. Later.